Okay, so welcome back. And uh, now we're going to kind of continue on with our discussion of circuit analysis. And we actually already have done uh, voltage dividers. And uh, we've seen them in a couple different examples. And the analysis that we just did, that uh, big analysis, let's take a look at that. That's still up here. So we just did this analysis. We actually did a voltage divider. So this section here relative to this section is a voltage divider. And this section relative to this section is a voltage divider. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of formally uh, take a look at this in a simplified way so that we can use voltage dividers as a tool. And uh, you probably heard this term before, voltage divider, uh, when people are talking about electronics or uh, engineering. And they're a very simple uh, tool, uh, nothing that you don't know how to do already, So, but it's just a certain configuration of uh, uh, voltage and resistors that you can use to kind of uh, you know, get, uh, get an output or get a voltage that you want. All right, so you can go ahead and uh, the notes, you, you have the notes uh, that you can read here. So you can read through these if you like. But uh, we're just going to kind of jump right into this and uh, take a look closely at it. So uh, one thing is that uh, uh, when we're doing voltage dividers, we're typically talking about uh, just two resistors. All right. So we've got an R1 and we've got an R2. All right. And so the problem is, is say you, you have a voltage. Maybe that voltage is 10 volts. Maybe it's 5 volts. Uh, maybe it's something else. And uh, you want to reduce that down somehow and uh, uh, so that you can use it in maybe a different part of the circuit. Or maybe an amplitude of something is too high and you want to scale it down. That's what uh, a voltage divider is for. So let's take a look at this uh, circuit here. And let's see if we kind of can analyze what's going on here. All right, so we've got a voltage uh, V, from, and it's plus to minus. And we've got the nodes A, B, and C here. All right, we've got two resistors, R1 and R2. All right, so right away, we know that uh, we can compute what the current is. So V equals I times R, so I would equal V over the sum of R1 and R2. All right, so uh, we could immediately compute what I is, and then we could compute what the voltage drop V1 is and V2 is by multiplying that I times R1 and R2. So that's very simple. That's just Ohm's law. So that's just, uh, we know how to do that. So that's what's kind of going on right here. We're just saying that I equals V over uh, R1 plus R2, all right, because these are series resistors, all right. Then, uh, similarly, we have, again, we rewrite to Ohm's law here, and then we can say that the voltage over V1 is simply that current, right, and that the current is the V over R1 plus R2 times R1, and the voltage over R2 is simply that current, which is V divided by R1 plus R2 times R2. Everything is the voltage, uh, the current times the resistance, current times the resistance, and that's it. So now if you look at this model here, right, and you've got these two resistors, R1 and R2, uh, then it's it's kind of like, oh, you can kind of simplify this a little bit and kind of make up a little, you know, rule of thumb uh, for converting uh, voltages and, and creating new voltages. And uh, so when we do that, we can kind of simplify this and we can kind of come up with these equations right here that says that V1, the voltage drop over this R1 resistor, and then we, V2, is simply R1 times V over R1 plus R2, and V2 is R2 times V over R1 plus R2. So that's it. So really, we didn't do anything. We just observed, right, if we compute the current in a two-resistor uh, loop, uh, and then we figure out what the voltage drops are over each of those resistors, then these simple equations can kind of tell us what's going on. So uh, so you can, you can write those down if you want. Uh, they're very easy to, tr to uh, derive. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can uh, use these equations to kind of uh, solve for something, all right? So let's go ahead and see what we have here, all right? And let's see if there's anything exciting here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do uh, an example, and then I'm going to show you uh, some other things about it. But let's do a couple examples, and let's uh, actually go and, and build something here. All right, so uh, first thing is, let's take these and let's remember what these are. So this says the voltage uh, drop one is simply R1 times V over R1 plus R2, and the voltage drop two is simply R2 times V over R1 plus R2. And this is just the current each time, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go back uh, to our drawing program here. Let's delete all that. 
and let's run through and see if we can uh, actually do this uh, uh, in a real example. Okay, so the first thing is, let's, uh, let's draw something. Let's draw with a, a voltage source this time. And uh, let's say, let's be tangible. Let's uh, call this uh, 12 volts. Okay, and now let's say that, you know, we've got this uh, 12 volt uh, signal, maybe, or this, you know, DC 12 volts, and we want to get, say, like a lower voltage off of this, all right? We need a, you know, like a 5 volts or something like that. So we say, hey, let's use a voltage divider, all right? And we go through here, and then we've got R1 here, and we've got R2 here, all right? And uh, we know that we're going to have some voltage drops uh, over here, V1, and we're going to have V2. And then, of course, we're going to have our current that flows through here, flows through both resistors. And let's not go through the uh, symbols there. Let's try and get a little bit cleaner. And let's just call this I. And we could call this I1 you know, uh, or, or I2. They would be the same, right? So we'll just call it I. Okay. So now, uh, what do we know? Well, let's write down uh, Ohm's law again. And let's compute what this I is in the circuit. And uh, we can call it lowercase i or uppercase here. We'll just call it I. And it equals the total voltage, V, which is 12 volts, over the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2, right? R1 plus R2. Let's go ahead and let's put some values for this. So let's say that R1 is, uh, let's say that this is uh, 20 ohms. And let's say that R2 is uh, 100 ohms. All right, so uh, that would be 20 ohms plus 100 ohms. All right, that would be our current. So let's get out our calculator. So 12 divided by quantity uh, 20 plus 100 equals 100 milliampers. All right, so we've got 100 milliampers there. All right, 100 milliampers. All right, so that's our I, and now we can figure out each of these uh, voltages if we want. It's just 100 times 20 and 100 times 100. So 100 milliampers times our 20, so if we just take that times 20, that's going to be 2 volts. So we know that V1 is 2 volts, and now we know that the voltage drops in a complete loop, sum up to 0, right? That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we could just say 12 minus 2 equals 10, or we could do it, right? So we know that that's going to be 10 volts, or we could just take the 100 milliamps times 100 uh, ohms. That's going to also give us 10 volts. So everything is as it should be. So we just figured this out by kind of an analysis. Now let's see if uh, the equations work themselves. So the equations say that V1 equals R1 <clears throat> over, or uh, actually R1 times V over R1 plus R2. And V2 equals R2 times V over R1 plus R2. All right. So really, all this really is, is if you think about this, <clears throat> it's just a ratio. It's just a ratio metric calculation. And if you have these two resistors, the voltage drop over this R2 is going to be the proportion of R2 of the total sum. That would just be R2 over R1 plus R2 times the total voltage. And the same thing is with this one. This would uh, The voltage drop over this would just simply be R1 over the sum R1 plus R2 times the total voltage, right? And that's all these equations do. So let's just let's plug them in here. So V1, let's just do it right here if we can, is R1, which is 20 ohms, times V, which is 12 volts, over R1 plus R2, that's 20 plus 100, is just 120 ohms. And the next one is R2, which is 100 ohms times 12 volts. And again, over the same denominator, 120 ohms. So let's do the math. The first one is 20 times 12 equals, divided by 120, equals 2. So this equals 2 volts. So sure enough, that checks out. And let's do this one. 100 times 12 is, again, 100 times 12, we know that that's 1,200, divided by 120, divided by 120, and that's 10 volts, 10 volts, and that checks out, right? And so uh, both of these give the exact same results as the analysis. So these little modeling equations, right, 
if you have a circuit that looks like this, uh, you can just use these to compute what these voltages are here. All right. And now, <clears throat> and then likewise, notice one thing that's kind of interesting here. No matter what the values of the resistances are, if the ratio of the resistances uh, maintains is the same, you're going to get the same voltages. <clears throat> so for example, let's go <clears throat> and let's change it to 200 ohms and 1,000 ohms. All right, let's get rid of these. And let's redo the calculation. We'll redo it over here. So, uh, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's V1 equals R1. What's R1? 200 now. 200 ohms times V. What's V? Still 12 volts over the sum of these, which is 200 plus 1,000. So let's just write it out this time. 200 plus 1,000 ohms or 1K ohm. All right, that equals whatever it equals. V2 equals, what is that? R2, what's R2? 1,000 ohms times 12 volts over the same denominator, which is 200 ohms plus 1,000 ohms. All right, so let's do the math. 200 times 12, 200 times 12, 200 times 12 equals 2,400 divided by the sum of 200 plus uh, 1,000, which is, of course, 1,200. So that gives us 2 volts. Again, let's do the bottom calculation here. 1,000 times 12, 1,000 times 12, of course, better be 12,000, divided by the denominator, which, again, is 1,200, 200 plus 100, 1,200, and that better be 10, 10 volts. And again, notice that they are the same. Uh, right here, there's our uh, 2 volts, and there's our 10 volts. All right, and the exact same as we calculated. So the ratio doesn't matter. So, OK, so wait a minute. This should uh, set off some red lights. So if the values of the resistors don't matter, then what's going on here? Why are there an infinite number of resistor values? The reason is. The voltages will stay the same, but the current changes. So this current I does indeed change. But since that same current drops over each one of these or goes through each one of these resistors and generates a voltage, right? the voltages stay the same, but the current is actually less. Ah, let's figure out what the current is. Now, in the first case, when we had the 20 and the 100 ohms, right? we figured out that it was 100 milliampers. So we increase the resistances by a factor of 10. Our intuition should tell us that V equals I times R is a linear equation. The current should now increase by 10 or decrease by 10? Decrease by 10, because we're going to increase the resistance. Let's see. So what is the current? Well, it's simply the voltage divided by the total resistance. What's the voltage? It's 12 volts divided by what's the total resistance? 1,200 ohms now, 1,200 ohms. And now when we do this, we have 10 milliampers. So now when we do this same equation, I equals 12 volts over 200 ohms plus 1,000 ohms, we get 10 milliamps. All right, so we had 100, now we have 10. So we decrease the amount of current. So. So, so what use is this? So obviously, if you have a large signal or a large voltage, you can use a voltage divider to decrease and scale the voltage. You can scale it down. You can never make it bigger, right? We have to use amplifiers or transformers to do that. So you can't make it bigger, but you can make it smaller. Now, when you pick your resistors to do this voltage divider, the question is, well, how do I pick them? Do I just pick one of them uh, you know, and then solve for the other one? And then what scale should I make them? The, the answer to the question is, well, how much current do you want flowing in the circuit? All right. So one way to do this is to say, say, for example, we wanted to set the current to, uh, let's say that we wanted to set the current to one amp. OK, so we want uh, one amp of current in the circuit. So that's what we want. All right. And uh, so let's just write that down. We want one amp is what we want. <clears throat> we know that V equals I times R, and we know that we have a voltage of 12 volts, so let's just figure out what the resistance would be. So 12 volts equals our current, which is 1 amp, times our resistance, and therefore divide both sides by 1 amp, and we have our resistance equals 12 ohms. So we know that the total resistance of R1 and R2 needs to be 12 ohms to set up the current of 1 amp. 
Now all we need to do is figure out what the values of R1 and R2 are. And there's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, we're, you know, we've got you know, some ratios here. We've got uh, you know, a number of different ways that we can do this. And so uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through all of them. But we'll just kind of look at the most obvious way. So uh, one way to do it is we can uh, simply look at uh, one of these equations here. Right? Either one of these equations will, will do the job. And so the first equation says uh, that uh, V1 equals R1 times V over R1 plus R2. All right, so V1 is we want to maintain the voltage ratio. So the voltage is going to stay the same. So we're going to get 2 volts equals R1. That's what we're looking for. What is the R1 that makes this true? Times V, well, that's just the 12 volts over the total resistance R1 plus R2, but we actually know that that's 12 ohms, right? So we already know what, uh, what that value is. All right, so uh, now we can simply uh, simplify this, and we have 12 volts over the 12 ohms. That's just one, and then we've got R1, uh, and then this is going to, uh, uh, this is uh, two volts here. So R1 is going to end up being uh, uh, two ohms. All right. So, uh, so in this case, we could, you know, run this through if we want, uh, but uh, regardless, the volts are going to cancel out, and we're just going to be left with ohms here. All right, so R1 is going to equal uh, 2 ohms. All right, then we can do the same thing over here, and we have V2. So what's V2? It's 10 volts, and that's what we want. And then R2 we're trying to find, and times V, again, which is 12 volts, over the total resistance, again, which is uh, 12 ohms. And again, if you just move these things around, uh, you're going to end up the 12 and the 12 cancel out, the volts cancel out, and the ohms invert, and then we just get, this just turns to 1, so we just get R2 equals 10 ohms. All right? And, and that makes sense. Uh, if we had 100 milliamps, if we now just uh, decrease the uh, resistors again, instead of 20, and uh, 10 ohms, uh, 100 ohms, like we did them. Now they're they're two and 10 ohms. All right. So uh, so and, and and again, you can look at these ratios and, and figure things out as well. So the whole thing here to remember. Let, let's erase all this. Let's just erase all this, so we can see here a little bit better. The whole thing to remember about voltage dividers <clears throat> is is this simple little fact here. You've got two resistors like this. We've got a voltage V which is the same voltage over here, right, to ground, right? This is V right here as well. And we're calling this R1, we're calling this R2, this is going to drop plus to minus, this is going to drop plus to minus, we call this V1, we can call this V2. The bottom line is this, is that the, uh, the current through here is a function of the sum of these two resistors. So the voltage drop is, is linear. So whatever we have is the voltage over here, uh, Part of it's going to drop over R1, and part of it's going to drop over R2. The part of it that's going to drop over R1 is simply R1 over the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2. The total, uh, the voltage that's going to drop over R2 is R2 over R1 plus R2. This is just very, very simple ratios. It's just R1 over the total sum and R2 over the total sum. And then, uh, then we scale that times the voltage, V times that, V times that right? And uh, this, this whole thing here uh, is going to equal V2, and this whole thing here is going to equal V1. So again, just realize that it's just simply the resistor over the total resistance, the other resistor over the total resistance, and times the voltage. That percentage of the voltage is going to drop over each of these resistors. Now, uh, I want to bring your attention to uh, something specific, though. And that is the voltage at this node right here. You want to be a little bit careful about this. These voltages we compute, V1 and V2, they're the voltage drops over each one of these resistors uh, independently. But they're not the voltage at the nodes. That's always relative to ground. Now, if you have a circuit like this where R2 ends up at ground, then V2 right, is identical to this node voltage. right? So whatever V2 is, uh, say, for example, uh, that uh, V2 ended up being, you know, uh, say, 3 volts, and V1 ended up being, say, 5 volts, then we know that there must have been a total of 8 volts here. 3 volts dropped here uh, over R2, 
But since this is at ground, this node here must be at 3 volts. If this node is at 3 volts, and we know that 5 volts dropped over this resistor, then this node must be at 8 volts. And it has to be because it's the same as this node here, which always has to be at 8 volts relative to the ground here. So, uh, so anyway, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, if this voltage here is not ground, then you have to adjust these things uh, so that you know your calculation is correct, uh, and and uh, just be careful, all right. But but very simply, it's just a ratio. It's the resistor uh, that you're looking for the voltage drop over the total resistance times the voltage, and it's the other resistor over the total resistance times the voltage, and that's that's it. That's all the voltage uh, divider is. Super simple. Now, uh, one reason that you might want a voltage divider. Let's get rid of this. Is we may want to, so let's say, all right, so let's jump ahead of ourselves a little bit here, all right? Let's jump ahead of ourselves a little bit. Let's say that we have uh, some signal here, all right? Let's say that we have some signal here. And uh, so, uh, and let's say that this is a, kind of a digital signal, all right? So let's say that this is a digital signal. In fact, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's, kind of draw this sort of how this would kind of be. So say we have this digital signal here, all right? And let's let's kind of do a fun example, all right? And let's say that our digital signal is going to go up to 5 volts, and here's 0 volts right here, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, onward. Let's say that this is time here, all right, the time axis, T. All right, and then let's say that our digital signal is looking something like, and we don't care what the scale of it is, how fast it's going, but we're just doing this as an example. And uh, let's say it's at zero, then it goes up to five volts, and then it goes back down, then it goes back up, then it goes back down, then it goes back up, and, and so on, all right? And it just does this, all right? And let's draw that a little bit better. Oops, well, let's do it again. All right, let's go up. These are totally flat. All right, even though I'm not drawing them totally flat. These uh, graphics tablets are surprisingly difficult because you're looking at the screen and drawing on something else. So you got to get really used to it. Okay. All right, so we have this scenario right here. All right, and then this signal, right, uh, uh, whatever this is, let's just call this, uh, let's just call this, uh, we'll call this signal, you know, S1 for signal one. And here it is here, it's S1. So here comes S1, and it's, uh, you know, coming down. And S1 is uh, relative to ground, okay? So it's relative to ground. We have this S1 signal, which represents, we don't know, we don't care. And now the problem is, is we need to scale this down because maybe uh, uh, the thing that we want to talk to is a 3.3 volt system. So this is a 5 volt system here, and we want to uh, talk to a 3.3 volt system over here, all right? 3.3 volt system over here. And uh, let's just draw that again. 3.3 volt system over here. All right. So we want to scale this voltage down. Now there's lots of ways to do this. There are things called level translators and all kinds of things, but we can do it with a simple voltage divider. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, so when the voltage is a zero, we want to get a zero out. And when the voltage is five, we want to get a 3.3 volt out. All right. All right, so let's see if we can do this with a voltage divider. All right, so we're going to take our circuit here, and we're going to put a resistor here, and we're going to put another resistor here. All right, and we're going to call this resistor R1, and we're going to call this resistor R2. All right, and uh, again, we can you know label things here. We'll call this V1. We can call this V2. But the thing that we're really interested in is this node right here. All right, and I'm going to call this, we're going to make this another signal, and this output right here, and we're going to call this, uh, how about we're going to call this, this is S1, so we're going to call this S2. And matter of fact, let's draw that in a different color so we can kind of see it better. And how about orange? Okay, so this is S2. So S1 is from a 5-volt system, S2 is a 3.3-volt system, and we want to make sure that if we send the signal in here, we get out 3.3-volt pulses and not 5-volt pulses, okay? So that is the statement of the problem. Now, uh, one thing is uh, we're going to connect this, say, digital I.O., right? So the term here is a 
you might call this a general purpose I.O. or a digital I.O., GPIO. You might hear that term when you start doing microcontroller stuff, general purpose uh, I.O. All right. Uh, and one thing is these uh, GPIOs can only source and sync so much current. <clears throat> All right. So typically that their current limits are on the order of about uh, 10 to 25 milliamps. All right. So uh, whatever we do over here, we're putting a circuit to ground here. And we want to be careful that uh, we don't draw too much current, right, in one case. In another case, we want to make sure that we can pull enough current from it so that it can be useful to drive something else maybe. But let's say we're going to make one kind of uh, concession. We're going to say whatever S2 connects to has a really high resistance. So uh, it's a lot of current is not going to go in this direction. So in other words, this uh, IS2 is going to be very, very, very small. All right. So really, all we care about is generating the proper voltage. And uh, we don't care uh, about how much current is going to go uh, this direction, because we know it's going to be very small. But maybe we want to get like 1 milliamp or 2 milliamp, something like that. So what we want to do is we want to set up enough current in this circuit so we can pull off uh, you know, some of this current without uh, distorting this 3.3 uh, volt voltage divider. So this is a very common problem that voltage dividers are used in. And uh, if you want to do a simple kind of hack, if you want to do this correctly, there's other ways to do it with transistors or FETs and all that. But we're going to just do this. So uh, again, we're not going to mull over this too hard. We're just going to say, all right, let's set this up so that we have a total of uh, 10 milliamp years flowing through this, all right? So when this thing turns on, it's going to burn 10 milliamps. All right, so that's number one. So we're going to set it up for 10 milliamp years. All right, uh, if we're going to set it up for 10 milliamp years, that's what's going to flow here. So our first problem is we need to find what the total resistance is to get 10 milliamp years out of the circuit, all right? So we have uh, 5 volts here, so let's let's write down our equations here. Uh, let's put our, uh, we'll put our Ohm's law up here for reference. And again, it's always nice just to have it. Okay, we want to compute R. So R total equals uh, V over I. V over I. In this case, what's the voltage? 5 volts. What's our I? 10 milliampers. This is going to tell us our R total. And R total is basically these two guys right here. And so, and this is how you do circuit design. You kind of first figure out the big part of the problem, and then you kind of break it into pieces and drill down to what you want. So, 5 volts divided by 10 milliampers equals 500 ohms. Okay, equals 500 ohms. So we know that our total is 500 ohms in total, all right, if we want to flow uh, this uh, 10 milliampers right here, okay? All right. And uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> now we, we can basically use a number of different techniques, but let's use the voltage divider equations to kind of see if we can solve for this, all right? So let's get a different color here. Let's get, well, let's get this color. All right, and what did our voltage divider equations say? So they said that uh, V1 equals R1 times the total voltage, V, over R1 plus R2, and be careful, that's in parentheses. And it said that V2 equals R2 times V, and that's always V source of the source, over R1 plus R2. Okay, so, and these are our voltage divider equations. So voltage divider equations, all right? Okay. So we know <clears throat> that when the uh, system is high, we're going to have 5 volts uh, right here, all right? We're going to have five, excuse me, we're going to have 5 volts up here at this node right here, right? We're going to have 5 volts right there. And so that's our V, all right? And then we know that at S2, we want to have 3.3 volts, okay? So now we, we more or less have everything we need to know. So uh, this has got to be 3.3 volts when this is 5 volts. We also know that the total resistance has to be 500 ohms. So let's see what we know here. <clears throat> so what do we know? Uh, do we know what V2 is? Yes. V2 is 3.3 volts because uh, we want it to be 3.3 volts relative to ground. So that's easy. Do we know what V1 is? Yes. 
V1 must be 5 volts minus 3.3 volts, right? Or 1.7 volts, right? So uh, we can say V1 equals 1.7 volts, all right? Okay, uh, so now we have everything we need to know. Let's take a look at one of these equations. Can we use one of these to solve? So let's use the one that actually has R2 in it because that's uh, what we first want to find out, right? Let's figure out what R2 is. So this one right here. V2 equals R2 times V over the sum of R1 plus R2. So let's start plugging things back in. Do we know what V2 is? Yes, it's 3.3. 3.3 volts. Do we know what R2 is? No, that's what we're trying to find. Okay. Do we know what V is? Yes, we do. V is uh, the uh, total V of the, uh, uh, of the voltage divider, which is 5 volts. All right. Do we know what R1 plus R2 is? We don't know what R1 is, we don't know what R2 is, but we know their sum needs to be 500 ohms. All right, and I think you can see where we're going with all this. Okay, so 3.3 equals R2 times five uh, volts divided by 500. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this algebra and then figure out what R2 is, all right? So we're gonna take five divided by 500, all right? And then I'm going to take that number and then I'm gonna invert that and I'm going to multiply that times 3.3, and that's 330 ohms. All right, so equals 330 ohms. So R2 is 330 ohms, 330 ohms. We could do the same calculation and, and use this equation here, but we don't need to because we know the total is, is 500, so we know that R total equals R1 plus R2, right? which we know that 500 equals R1, uh, which we're trying to find, plus R2, which is now 330 ohms. Therefore, uh, R1 must be 500 minus 330, right? 500 minus 330. And again, just, just play dumb when you're doing arithmetic. You'll make mistakes. Let the calculator do it in your head, and then let the calculator do it also. And that way, you'll usually, between the two of you, you'll uh, be right. 170 ohms. So where are we here? Uh, we'll write it uh, one, right here, 170 ohms. So that's it. So if you build this circuit and you put a 5-volt signal uh, uh, oscillating like this uh, through the circuit and you put a 170 up top and you put a 330 resistor in the bottom, you're going to get pulses. Instead of 5-volt pulses, you're going to get 3.3-volt uh, pulses. So you have, in essence, uh, did a level translation from a 5 volt system to a 3.3. So this might be 5 volt TTL to uh, low power, uh, low power uh, TTL, 3.3 uh, volts. All right. So <clears throat> uh, I think now, and, and then one little, uh, let's talk about one little thing here. And, and I think we're ready to uh, go on the bench and, and play around here. We've done enough theory. One thing I wanted to talk about was we said that the current going through uh, this node here, going uh, out S2, was going to be very, very small. In other words, and I want to use some terminology here, in other words, whatever we connect here, this resistance to ground, and that's a horrible ground, this resistance, I'm going to call it RL for R load, okay, or R load. The whole idea here is, We've created a voltage divider, but if we put another resistor in parallel with R2, we're going to change what R2 is. Now, R2 is 330 ohms. So if we put another resistor that's 10 times larger than R2, then the effect uh, this RL will have on R2 will be very, very small. Uh, so in other words, it's not going to change its resistance too much. So we're not going to load it too much. So this voltage isn't going to change too much. All right, let's do an example. So let's just use common sense here. So if I, for example, use a 10 times larger resistor, so say that our load resistor was 3.3K ohms. So what's the parallel combination of 330 and 3.3K? Let's do it. So 330 parallel with 3.3K. So remember, it's the product over the sum. So the product, 330 times 3.3K over the sum, 330, plus 3.3k. Let's get our calculator and let's do this. Now watch this. 330 times 3.3k divided by, make sure you use your parentheses, 330 plus 3.3k equals 300 ohms. So the result 
of adding this impedance, this load resistor over here of 3.3K modifies this resistor and decreases it to 300 ohms uh, as the equivalent resistance. Therefore, the voltage drop over it's going to be a little bit less than 3.3 volts. It's going to change. It's going to be 3.2, 3.1, right? It's going to decrease because the voltage divider action is going to change because the voltage divider, instead of seeing 330, is now going to see 300. But this is, this is tolerable. It only changed it by 10%. So that's okay. 10% we're fine. However, what if we made this instead of 3.3K, what if we made it 100 ohms, okay? What if we made it 100 ohms? So let's do that calculation. So now we have 330 in parallel with 100 equals 330 times 100 divided by 330 plus 100. Let's do the math. So 330 times 100 equals divided by quantity 330 plus 100. 76 ohms. So that equals 76 ohms, all right, 76 ohms. So, uh, and uh, hopefully you can see this is not getting covered, uh, 76 ohms. The, the point is when we add the 3.3K, we get uh, a resulting impedance or total R2 uh, with a load of 300. But if we add change the load to 100 ohms, this drops down to 76 ohms. In other words, we don't have 330 anymore, we have 76. This voltage is going to radically drop, and we're not going to have what we want anymore. So the point is, is that when you do these voltage dividers, whatever the load is you're going to put on it, make sure that the load is at least an order of magnitude larger so that the voltage divider uh, maintains its voltage divider action or its stiffness. And it's called stiffness, like a spring, because if you add something to it, it doesn't change it that much. Ideally, you want it to change zero. That would mean you'd have to have an infinite impedance here, right? So we can't really do that. But anyway, we set the current up, and, and these resistors are pretty low so that uh, this thing you know, does what it does. Now, if we needed this to be stiffer, we could increase the current to 100 milliamps and turn the total resistance to 50 ohms. And then we could change these two resistors to 17 and 33 ohms if we wanted to. Then it would be 10 times stiffer. Then if we added uh, smaller resistors, it would still maintain the voltage divider action, but we're burning 100 milliamps every time the GPIO turns on, right? So we don't really want that. Okay, so uh, now that we've kind of done this, uh, we've talked about voltage dividers, we've done the math, let's actually do an experiment uh, right now. Let's get onto the bench and let's build a little voltage divider and let's put a voltage to it and let's uh, do something very similar to this right here and we can see if we can find a 330 and something around a 170 and we'll do a 5 to 3.3 uh, divider, right? So meet me over on the bench and let's go do that. Okay, so we're over here at the bench and uh, what our goal is is to kind of mimic what we did uh, over there. We're going to have a 5 volt supply, we're going to have a voltage divider with two resistors, and we're going to try and turn 5 volts into 3.3 volts with magic. All right, so let's go ahead. And uh, so I've looked around, and I would have been able to find 170 ohms, but I think I found 180 ohm. So first, here is our uh, 330 ohm. So let's take a look at that under the zoom camera. All right, let me zoom in there. And that's orange, orange, brown. And let's, uh, you know, let's uh, check sanity check us ourselves here. All right, and all right, so that's going to work. And let me get the uh, meter there so you can see it. All right, and there we go. We've got on resistance and 0.3 uh, K. And let's just, uh, this particular meter, yeah, I think it has a maximum range of 200 ohms. So you have to put it to the K range. Yeah, so this kind of sucks. You have to put it to the K range. I don't really like that. Let's, uh, let's use a different meter. And like I said, a lot of times these meters have uh, ranges. Uh, and uh, if something's in between the range, you got to go to the next range and it, you may not like it. So again, that's another reason why I have many meters. All right, so now it's in auto range mode. So let's go here and let's measure this. All right, and it's auto ranging and there we go. 327, uh, 330 ohms is uh, supposed to be what it is. So, okay. All right, so we got that. And then now we've got our other resistor right here. And this is uh, 180 ohms, supposedly. Let's take a look at it. And 180, this would be brown, like gray-brown, I believe. All right, and let's uh, measure that. Let's measure that over here. Okay. And 
Get our meter here again. Okay. And we're looking for 180 ohms. Perfect. 180, 178. Okay. So the uh, circuit that we're trying to make here is we're going to come in from the power supply. All right. And the power supply is going to be up top here. And that's going to be where we're going to bring in our, our 5 volts. Then we want to have our uh, smaller resistor, our, uh, like our 180. All right. And we're going to put that right there. And then we want to have our larger resistor, which is like our 330. Okay. And then we're going to take that and we're going to go to ground. Okay. So, all right. So that's, that's as simple as it is. All right. So we're going to get our meter here. And so we're going to apply 5 volts to here. And then the uh, question is, will we have 3.3 volts over our uh, resistor? So let's, let's give it a try. So we'll put the meter into voltage mode. All right. I'm going to turn the power supply on. The power supply is on. And all right. So first, let's verify that we have 5 volts coming into the system. We have 5 volts. Good. And we should have 3.3 volts, or roughly 3.3 here. And we sure do, 3.25 volts. OK, now let's go ahead and let's load this. So let's load it with, say, a, let's find a 10K resistor. Let me find a 10K resistor. Here's one right here. All right. So say we want to take this signal, and we want to send it someplace in our circuit. And that impedance of that, uh, wherever that's ending up, is, say, 10K. All right. So now we're going to take that signal. And uh, let's use, let's use uh, this right here. All right, so now remember, this is the node. This is the output right here. Be careful. All right, so there's the output right there. All right, so now uh, we still want to maintain this 3.3 volts here. So let's see what it actually is. So is it 3.3 volts? We know that it's not going to be. We know that it's going to be slightly less because we've loaded it. But we loaded it with a very large resistor. And the resistor is uh, 30 times larger than the uh, R2 resistor of uh, 330. So we're loading it basically by uh, 3%. So we should see very, very little deviance from the 3.25 volts. But let's, uh, let's check it out. So here we go. We're going to go from ground here. And we're going to go right here. It's the same node. And sure enough, it's 3.21 instead of 3.25. So the 10K load is just fine. No problem. So 10K load is, is just fine. Now let's go to a 1K load. 1K load. Here's a 1K load, brown, black, red. On the zoom camera there, brown, black, red. There we go. And we just move our load and put uh, our, our new load in here. All right. So we've got that. Let's put our meter back so we can see what's going on here. Now we expect to have a much, much greater deviance. The reason why is this load is only three times bigger than the uh, R2 resistor in our voltage divider. So it's going to destabilize this quite a bit. So let's see what it does. So here we go. And now we've got 2.9 volts. So almost 3 volts. Now, if this was a 3.3 volt system, we'd still be just, we'd still be fine. It would still register as a high, a digital high, so we'd be OK. All right. Now, let's go and really load it. And let's go ahead and put a 100 ohm resistor here, 100 ohms. Now we're done. This is just going to brutalize it. Now we're going to load it all the way. So 100 ohm resistor, and our poor little voltage divider is going to give in. All right, so uh, again, let's take a look. So what's the total voltage of the system? Again, it's, and my meter is not cooperating with me. There we go. Something happened there. OK, there we go. 5 volts. All right, and now let's check out what our voltage is. It's 1.48, 1.5. That's it. We're done. So now we've completely uh, loaded the system way too much. So uh, in essence, we've learned that you know uh, 1K or higher is probably OK if we're going to convert, uh, do a 5 to 3.3 uh, volt system. OK, so now let's go ahead and let's put back our load, uh, our load resistor, our 10K load resistor. And let's have a little bit of fun and end this out, all right? OK, so the first thing uh, that I'd like to do is we are going to uh, undo the uh, power here. So let's undo the power. And instead, let's go ahead and let's uh, inject a signal from our uh, signal generator, right? So let's inject a signal from our signal generator. Now, here's our signal generator. And uh, so 
we've uh, used this before, so let's go ahead and grab channel one here. All right, we're going to grab channel one, and uh, each one of these channels has uh, two clips, right? And uh, alligator clips, and so the signal plus and the signal minus is going to be right there. So we're going to plug this into our circuit. So this is going to go into our circuit. So back on the other camera here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that. All right, now. On our signal generator, here's the output button. We're not going to turn this thing on. So it's on channel 1 right now. It's at 60 hertz and 20 volts peak to peak. Well, we don't want that, do we? That's way too much voltage here. All right, so what we want to do is we're going to lower this down to 5 volts. All right, we're going to lower it down to 5 volts. And let's go ahead and let's just increase the frequency to make it something fun. Instead of 60 hertz, let's make it, uh, a, let's make it a kilohertz. So 1 kilohertz. All right, so it's 1 kilohertz. It's a 5 volt signal, all right, and let's do a square wave. So we're going to do a square wave. So this is modeling exactly kind of what we, uh, we had, all right? Now, to confirm that we have this, I'm going to turn this on, but what we really need is the oscilloscope so that we can see what the signal is, right? So what we can do is we can go and we can connect up the oscilloscope to the input, and we can monitor and make sure that we're getting this 5 volt signal. So let's go over and set up the oscilloscope uh, as well. All right, so let's go and take a look at that. Okay, so now we see the oscilloscope here, and I'm going to go grab uh, channel 1 here. All right, and these uh, probes are always someplace where they shouldn't be, but all right, and uh, the probe looks like this. All right, and it's got, this is the ground, and then this is kind of what we grab things with. So we're going to hook this to the plus and this to the ground uh, over on our board. All right, so I'm going to do that right now, so you should be able to see that process going on on the other camera here. So let's do that. All right, so that's going to be our input signal. Okay, good. Now... Let's uh, go ahead and let's kind of set up our oscilloscope to kind of read what we, we think we're doing here. So the first thing is we are looking at channel one. That's good. And then let's put the amplitude as one volt per division. And then the sweep, uh, let's put it at, we're, we want to look at a, a one kilohertz. So let's put this, say, at uh, oh, 40 microseconds per division. We should be able to see it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the uh, signal generator that's going to generate this 5 volt uh, square wave which we should see on here and then we can start measuring on the actual board all right so we got a lot of things going on here so here we go so we're going to turn it on all right so I've turned it on now you can see the square wave on the oscilloscope so let me change the horizontal timing a little bit okay let's look at its amplitude we'll press the measure button the frequency is 1 all right and then the uh, let's see here let's go to uh, let's go to cursors and let's measure voltage. All right, we're going to measure uh, channel one. Let's move this one up here and then let's move this one down here. And, you know, every time you get a new oscilloscope, you got to figure out how it works. All right. And so we've got our uh, five volts here. Oops. All right. We've got our uh, DV of five volts here. All right. Now, uh, one thing is we want to make sure of is let's do this, get rid of this. We're going to go to channel one here. We've got DC coupling. And what this is showing, so this is important. Right now, uh, what's happening here is this is ground, and it's showing that half the signal is going high and the other half is going low. This is actually an AC signal. We want ground to be zero. We would, this is a digital system we're trying to simulate, so we don't want anything going below zero. So the oscilloscope is actually telling us we're going below zero. So that means our signal generator, we've got the offset uh, incorrect. Not incorrect, but we just have it set for an AC signal. We need to, we need to up the offset. Uh, so that we're going from 0 to 5 volts and not negative 2.5 to uh, 2.5. So I'm going to go over and uh, fix this right now. So I'm going to go over and fix this. You can probably see it getting changed over there. Okay. And now I'm increasing it to 5 volts with an offset of 0. So that's what I want. Now let's move this back into position here. Okay. And now we've got our 5 volt signal. We've got one volt per division. So if you if you count this up, one, two, three, four, five, it's five. We can also press measure. All right, and we're getting our one kilohertz, and then we can press this little button right here, and we can kind of measure different things. And we want 
uh, let's see here, peak to peak, uh, maximum, all right, is 4.64 volts, all right? So uh, that's good enough, close enough uh, for what's going on here. Okay, so we've got our signal. We've got our signal generator. We're looking at it with the oscilloscope. And now we want to see what's the signal coming out of the other node. All right, so this is where the power of the oscilloscope comes into play. So what we're going to do is uh, look back here at our circuit. And we know that here's our load. So we're going to put another oscilloscope probe on here, channel 2. And we can look at them simultaneously. That's why you want to have uh, uh, many, many channels on your oscilloscope. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get the other channel of the oscilloscope. And uh, let's snake it through here. Bear with me. All right, so I got this. Okay, here we go. And here it is right here. So now what I'm going to do is we have to uh, attach it here and then common the grounds. All right. So we'll connect the ground up here. Getting messy, just the way it is. Okay. Now, there we are. So we're all good. Let me just zoom in a little bit on that so you can kind of see that. Okay. So we're looking at the load. Uh, load resistor, the voltage at the load resistor, which should be about 3.3 volts. We've got this 10K resistor. Now, back on the oscilloscope, you're looking at the oscilloscope. We're seeing channel one right here. So let's go ahead and let's add channel two. So there's channel two. And now let's first, let's change the scale to two volts per division. Let's move channel one up a little bit. Now, here's channel two. And now we're going to put channel two at the uh, same, oops, we're going to put it at the same 2 volts per division. All right, and we'll move it down vertically here. Now we see that uh, what's happening here is we're losing uh, tracking here. All right, and then now we have it back. And there we go. So the tracking works, or, or the triggering, uh, is based on an edge of the signal, or the high or the low. And we can set it up here. It's on channel 1 right now. And we have to make sure that channel 1 has a rising edge so it can uh, lock onto it. OK, so now uh, we see that we have both signals on here. And the top signal is our, of course, 5 volt uh, input signal. And our output signal is our voltage divided signal, which we are hoping is about 3.3 volts. So let's go ahead and let's measure them with and, and another thing. Take a notice. Take a look. They're identical. So in time, uh, there's no lag. All right, because there's no capacitance or inductance. These are just resistors, so there's going to be no lag. So if we keep uh, you know, going like this, these edges will be dead on each other. Now, if there was capacitance and resistance, that wouldn't be the case. All right, let's measure these values and let's see if we're getting this 3.3 volts out. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn cursors on. Let's go to uh, channel two. We already know that channel one is uh, okay. All right, and we're going to move the top cursor here. And, you know, when you have all this noise, it's like, where do you do this? Well, you can kind of do it in the middle. You can kind of do it at the top. You know, you just come up with a... Uh, a convention and kind of stick to it. All right, and then we'll go to the bottom here. All right, and so we're looking at about uh, three volts. All right, so considering that our, uh, remember, our uh, signal generator is not actually putting out the full five volts. Why? Because we're loading it. Since we're loading it with these resistors, so see the resistors here, we're loading it. And remember, I told you it can't uh, tolerate uh, driving a lot of current. And because of that, we're not actually getting the full uh, voltage uh, that we would expect. We're getting less. So if we go and look at uh, channel 1 here, and we look at what the uh, voltages are on channel 1, all right, okay, we're getting like only 4.5 volts out. So we're, the voltage divider action is working correctly, but we're getting less. So what we could do is we could adjust this a little bit to offset this. So what we could do is let's make sure that we get 5 volts. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually increase this artificially over here. All right. About there. And then so on the signal generator, I just uh, increase the amount of uh, voltage a little bit. And now let's uh, measure. So now, OK. Now we're a little bit better. So now I eh, probably went over a little bit. Let me go down. OK, so I think now we're good. And if we put that in the center there, it's saying about 5.2. Let's go down a little bit more. All right. And there we go. So now that's 5 volts. So now we should have about 3 volts, 3.3 uh, volts for our other channel. All right. And again, this is a process. It's not quick and dirty. You're going to be here. So, you know. 
set some time aside because this is going to take you take you a long time to do this and run these experiments and get everything to work right and uh, and all that all right and it's a slow a tedious process but now look at that 3.36 volts almost perfect all right so I had to adjust the uh, signal generator and put it up to a 5.5 volts so that we got a, a clean 5 volt square wave out of there because of the loading of this circuit right here. So now, uh, so that's it. And so now if we, so now let's do, do something here. So uh, what I'm going to do is keep you on the oscilloscope. I'm going to turn the frequency up now. It's at 1 kilohertz right now. And let's start turning it up. And the ratio should stay the same. There's two. Right, and then you can see right here, and let's actually put measure on here so you can keep an eye on this. So uh, this is uh, channel two here, and it's saying it's 3.5. And again, you gotta take this with a little grain of salt, the way that it's doing things, but it's gonna roughly stay the same. All right, three, six uh, kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, all right? And again, the, uh, you, you see that it's not, uh, it's not wavering at all. And the reason why is because there's no reactants and now it's going so fast we can open this up and sweep at a higher frequency all right and we're now we're at 310 kilohertz and now we're at 400 kilohertz 500 kilohertz 600 now we're at a megahertz and again it's totally identical and the reason why is because we don't have any impedances or reactances so nothing is happening weird here in the AC uh, with this uh, signal changing because we have pure resistive circuits. Now, in, in reality, these resistors are actually have a little bit of capacitance and they have a little bit of inductance. So if we keep cracking this frequency up, we're going to start to see those effects. But we'll see the uh, the probes will probably degrade far before the resistors do. So just for fun, uh, I'm just going to just go crazy here. And there's 30 megahertz, 40 megahertz. And that's it right there so with this with this uh, signal the best I can do is 40 megahertz and the square wave is degraded into that all right it just cannot maintain the square wave but I can put it back into a sine wave and that's kind of what's left of it but you can see again we're still at about three point something right so uh, the voltage divider is maintaining operation even up into these high megahertz uh, ranges okay so anyway so that's a voltage regulator a voltage regulator that's a voltage divider and a very useful device but you have to take a take into consideration your loading uh, how much current it's burning uh, when uh, when it's turned on and turned off or if it's always on uh, uh, and what the uh, stiffness of it is and so forth and we saw that the equations are very very simple uh, to uh, uh, do the calculations and it's a really really useful device so uh, next we are going to uh, in the next lecture we're going to do uh, some simulation very little it's really not part of uh, what we're going to be talking about it's an advanced topic but I want you to at least see it uh, and kind of will play with some simple circuits. Actually, these voltage dividers will play with simulation, so you can kind of see uh, what those uh, are all about. So that'll be a lot of fun, uh, totally on the computer, and uh, kind of a, an easy, uh, kind of an easy uh, lecture. Okay, so uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye bye.